Um, I don't really like making these like solo to camera things, but so basically this plebiscite is going to be 150 million dollars to get like forms and stuff out to the people. That's 150 million dollars that could be spent on stuff like the mental health of young people and making sure that LGBTI places are funded correctly. But you know, don't worry about that. And then they're going to chuck another 7.5 million dollars of our money, like taxpayer money, like if you pay tax on anything you earn at work. That money's going into this shit. They're going to pay that to each side of the argument, including the no argument, so basically the marriage equality is wrong argument, to put their messages and what they think out to mainstream media outlets. So basically you're going to be sitting there with your parents, 12 year olds will be sitting there with their parents watching X Factor or whatever, and all of a sudden this thing pops up as to why the way that they are treated is okay, and why the way that they feel is wrong. They're literally like paying for bigotry, and Peter Dutton, Matthias Corman, Scott Morrison, all alright with it. So is Malcolm Turnbull. Malcolm was slightly re-elected by us, he was re-elected by left libs, and he was elected by liberal members and young liberals who wanted him to actually be the person with enough of a fucking spine to get stuff progressing. And all he's done is just been pissed on by the right. We're lucky to have people like Bill Shorten and Tanya Plibersek who are actually bothering to stand up for it. When I was like 12, I didn't know I was into anything other than girls, but because I was kind of a bit feminine, a bit skinny, I copped so much shit. I copped so much bullying because I was like slightly different. I was outcast from a lot of stuff and people want to be associated with me. Thankfully at 21 I've kind of been alright with myself now and I kind of don't need to associate with everyone that doesn't want to associate with me. There's still always times of homophobia and all that kind of stuff. But at school was where it was the worst and that's where it kind of formed my ideas of who I was. And this is what worries me about this whole plebiscite thing is that it's gonna make an entire generation of people like 12 year old me worried about who they are and worried about their environment and scared for their safety. Like it's a story for so many kids especially in regional areas. I grew up about an hour and a half out of the city and even there which was pretty more progressive than the country kind of areas it was still pretty bloody bad like it's gotten better as progressive people like us see it and in our kind of circles but the fact of it is the way that it's instilled into you from a young age by your parents especially and especially going to a catholic school made it very very scary this letter from this kid eddie who's 13 really kind of just sums it up really nicely and neatly because he's got two mums he's had to move schools because of that stuff he said that really upset me please do your job and seriously, that's all we want, for them to do their jobs and actually consult the populace themselves rather than putting money into this expensive and really divisive and awful, dangerous plebiscite. I'm really scared for young people. I'm scared for everyone. I'm scared to walk down the street and have a look at everyone who I currently look at and think, are you going to attack me? Are you going to think that I'm weird? And I'm going to have to think, did you vote no to me being the same as you? I'm scared to walk into a polling centre on February 11 if this thing goes through and do my vote. I'm really, really scared. And I'm mainly scared for people like 12 year old me. We need to get this fixed and this plebiscite can't happen. It's, it's as simple as that. We need to talk about it and we need to be really open about it. And we need to make sure that we're on the front foot with this because I'm really, really scared.